All right, and today we're going to be repainting this black guitar body, and we're going to repaint it red. But first, I have to use some wood filler in order to fill in all the gaps and holes that have been on here. This guitar has been fairly abused, and I'm not sure how long or how old it is, like maybe early 2000s, but the lacquer has been fully cured. And you can see there's all this damage at the bottom. There's wood sticking out of there. It's just a mess. So with the wood filler, I let it dry overnight. And then the next day, I used 320 grit or even 400 grit sandpaper, if you have it, to really level things out. I used a block of wood or you can use a piece of a pink eraser and make sure it's flat because you want to make sure it's an even surface all over the body. So when you put on your primer or your paint coats or even lacquer coats, everything is nice and even. And as you can see, there's a lot of lacquer on this guitar body. So I'm just using the 320 grit to remove all that shiny gloss off of it because I want it to be a nice matte color. And throughout the video, you will see me fast forward through this because it's just a tedious process sometimes and I didn't want to take up too much time. So I'm just fast forwarding everything here. And as you can see with the really bright light above me, I could really see how the shine is going away with the 320 grit. All right, since I have the guitar in a nice matte finish, I'm going to apply the Rust-Oleum 2X primer. This costs around $3 here in the United States, but if you're in a different country, it might cost you a little bit more. It just depends on where you're at. But I hung the guitar outside in a well-ventilated area. It's good to wear a respirator or a mask whenever you spray any type of paint or primer. And I have an attachment here as well, which makes spraying a whole lot easier. And it gives you a whole different kind of angle so your hand doesn't get tired because pressing down that nozzle is sometimes hard. So it's best to have this attachment to make things a whole lot quicker. And I put on uh, about three coats on here. You can see I'm lightly dusting it. I'm not trying to get everything completely white. It doesn't matter if you miss anything. You can always come back in a few minutes to recover it. But I did front and back, the edges, the bottom, make sure everything's covered. And like I said, take your time with this because you don't want to get any runs or any mishaps here. All right, and the guitar is already inside here. I'm going to use this steel wool pad that I bought. It's the 3M brand, and it was around another $2 here. I'm keeping track of how much I'm spending. But between my primer coats and paint coats, I want to make sure I smooth everything out before I apply another coat because I don't want it to cause any runs or build up in unnecessary places. And then I'm using here the Rust-Oleum Ultra Cover. It has paint and primer in it. So it's pretty much a two-in-one can, which is very, very convenient. As you can see, it's pretty satisfying to see it to go completely white to a whole candy apple red. And like I said, take your time and try not to cover everything at once because that's what causes runs. So I'm just going to lightly go over, get the sides, the bottom, the top. All right, since I got the guitar body back inside, you can see there's a couple runs on the back. And I'm not sure how that happened because I was pretty careful with my work, but things happen. So it's no issue since it's paint primer can. So it's easily sandable with almost any type of grid of paper. But here I'm just using a steel wool pad and just pretty much taking off the gloss again to make sure it's an even surface for my next coats. As you can see on the top there where it's white, that's where the big run is. So that's where my main focus on the sanding job will be. And after I'm done, I'm gonna take it back outside, hang it up and apply about three more coats. And now that I finished putting my last coats of color on the guitar, I'm going to run down through the items that you need for wet sanding the guitar. So here I have a 400 grit sandpaper, which is fairly rough. And then I'm going to work my way up to a 600 grit sandpaper. And then finally, I'm going to finish off with a 1500 grit or 1200 grit works as well. But this is just what I had laying around. And all these cost around 60 cents a sheet which is pretty cheap in my opinion. You can get them at almost any store, even online like Amazon or stumac.com. Then here's the 3M foam pad that I was using to sand in between the coats. And these will come in handy towards the final steps of the 1200 grit sandpaper. And I also have a little cup of water here next to me because with wet sanding, you wanna make sure you let it soak in there for maybe an hour before you really start sanding the guitar because it just softens up the paper a little bit. And as you can see here, my guitar body is already laid out. I used a pink eraser 
as a flat surface to make sure I because I didn't want to use a piece of wood because the piece of wood will add scratches to it if it slips off the paper. So using a pink eraser, which is rubber, is a little bit more safer in my opinion. So I'm just going to start working in the middle of the pickguard area and then just going and working in sections around the guitar body. And I also use my phone light to make sure I'm not going too deep into the paint because this is a very, very hard step to recover because then you have to take it back outside, pour more paint on it and wait a couple more days in order for the paint to dry up. So as like I said, I fast forward the video a lot here. I'm just slowly going in circles and going in different directions here. And I'm gonna be working my way up to 600 grit eventually. But for now, you can see all that white lacquer that's coming off. You can use a microfiber cloth or an old t-shirt or anything just to wipe it off. And you can see there's a big difference here. Now it's not as shiny as it was before in the beginning of this section. Now it's like a nice light matte color, which is what you want. And then the steel wool here, which is a double lot steel wool, which is also very inexpensive. And this is just the final step I use after the 1200 grit sandpaper. It just makes sure it levels everything out nicely. Here I'll be using the Stumac medium compound polishing. And I'll be using the foam pad wheel because it's more convenient and speeds things up a lot. So you want to work in sections and not stay in one place for too long because you could actually burn through the lacquer. And that's something you really want to avoid. And then I keep applying and working in my sections, moving left to right, up and down, make sure I'm getting the sides and the edges and the horns of the, of the guitar. And fine compound is also much more liquidy or more runny, if you could say. And I make sure to clean off my area with a microfiber cloth just to remove any other grits of the polishing compounds. And if you notice that red is coming off on your pad, then that means you're going too deep in there. The swirl remover is the final step that I like to do. Sometimes you could do it by hand, but like I said, if you have a foam pattern wheel, it's much more convenient. So this is the runniest compound of them all. So I have to make sure I don't spill anything or drop any on the floor, but it's very, very nice the way the reflection is already showing. I could actually see the bottles and everything there, and I'm very happy with how it's coming out so far. All right, and here are the final results. I must say, it is very, very nice. I could see my reflection of my phone in there. And many people say it's not possible to do with spray cans, but if you prepare well and prepare the surface, then it's totally doable. And I put in some aluminum shielding in there just for the electronics, so whenever I buy the pick guard and the new neck, it'll be up and ready to go in about a month or so. So I wanna thank you guys for watching the video. Make sure to leave a like and comment on the video and subscribe because I'll be doing way more projects this summer.